Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you an American thriller film, Bird Box. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins in a forest, with a woman named Mallory, taking two children named boy and girl, in a small row boat down a river in the forest. But before leaving, Mallory puts out a few rules for the children, and warns them strictly not to remove the blindfold. The two children nod their heads together, and Mallory takes out two small birds from their cages, and puts them in a small shoebox. Then Mallory proceeds to take both boy and girl towards the rowboat, using a wire tied among trees to guide them. Mallory makes both the children sit in the rowboat, and they all start their long journey. Then the movie scene shifts, and we can see what happened in Mallory's life five years ago. Mallory can be seen painting in her studio, while listening to loud music. Sometime later, her sister enters the studio, and stops the music. This makes Mallory turn around and look at her sister, and at the same time reveal her pregnancy to the viewers. Mallory's sister tells her to switch on the news, and see what's been happening all around the world. As instructed, Mallory switches on the news, and she sees news about mass suicides. A reporter says that all this first began in Romania, and that now it has spread to parts of Europe and Russia. Mallory thinks all this is bullshit, and puts the TV on mute. Then the two sisters argue about not talking with their mom, and then the topic shifts towards Mallory's new painting. Mallory's sister says that the people in the painting seem to be lonely. But Mallory intervenes, and says that it's a painting about people's inability to connect with each other. Unfortunately, the scene doesn't shift, and both the sisters continue to chat about Mallory's ex-boyfriend, and the way he left her, after learning that she was pregnant. Now the scene shifts, and Mallory is getting a scan of her pregnancy. The good doctor asks whether she wants to know the gender of the baby, but Mallory declines the offer. After some more chat, Mallory expresses her opinion of not being interested in raising a baby. So the doctor hands her a brochure, which would be helpful for other couples, who are looking to adopt a child. In the next scene, Mallory walks past a woman banging her head on a glass window, and rushes towards her sister's car. Mallory gets in, and tells her sister the incident. They both try to remain calm, and go to a safe place. The sister remains calm, and drives through the traffic. Sometime later, her phone rings, and Mallory turns back to take the phone. Suddenly, her sister starts crying at something invisible, and drives the car towards another car, in an attempt to kill herself. Unfortunately, their car flips over on the road. Mallory and her sister get out of the car, and her sister steps in front of a garbage truck, and kills herself. Mallory tries to gather herself, but she gets knocked over and over again. A woman tries to help her, although the woman's husband tells her not to. Unfortunately, the woman suddenly starts to see a vision of her mother, and walks towards a burning car. Then the woman gets inside the burning car, as her husband watches in horror. And immediately, the car explodes, killing her. A man picks up Mallory, and takes her to a nearby house, in which the woman's husband locked himself. The man knocks on the door, but the selfish old man doesn't open the door. A policewoman also joins the man outside, and starts knocking on the door. Hearing the people ask for help, the house owner goes and opens the door. As the three people come in, we get to see there are many people already inside the house. Every one of them is panicked and worried. Further to everyone's despair, the old man tells them that they are all going to die. Mallory tries calling her mother, but nobody picks up the phone. Then she notices a horse on the news, and remembers her sister, only because her sister works as a veterinarian. Then the people in the group start to talk about the things they saw, and an old lady tells them that she saw something, and even felt a presence. Then they all close the windows in the house. Then they deduce that seeing the entity would make people commit suicide. Then we can see that the movie's director put a character to explain what's going on, and named that character Charlie. Now Charlie tells everyone that in almost every ancient religion, there are entities or spiritual creatures that take the form of the host's worst fear or deepest sorrow, and make them kill themselves. Most people dismiss this as bullshit, while some believe it. Mallory tries to avoid the people in the house, and goes to be alone by herself. But the guy who rescued her, comes to her and introduces himself as Tom. Tom asks if she is okay, and asks her if she has suffered any injuries. Mallory initially hesitates to talk to Tom, but finally speaks to him, and starts crying. Mallory tells him about her sister, and about the woman who had lost her life in the process of saving Mallory. The old man, who was listening to this from behind, got angry at Mallory for mentioning his wife Lydia as a woman. Later that night, Mallory lies on a bed, and hears a lot of noises and whisperings. A few moments later, the scene shifts back to the present day, and it shows that Mallory and the two kids have been on the small rowboat in the river for six hours. 
Now we can see that Mallory has put a small tent-like cloth covering both boy and girl while they are sleeping. Mallory tries to contact people for help using the radio, but nobody replies to her distress calls. Now the screen shifts back to what happened five years ago, and we can see everyone sitting together in a living room. When a woman knocks on the door, asking for help, the old man, as usual, doesn't allow them to let her in, but having enough of his bullshit, Mallory points the shotgun at him. Tom uses this opportunity to bring in the lady, and she introduces herself as Ginger. We get to see that Ginger is also pregnant, and that she is due soon, just as Mallory. Having a new member, the food they have would also get over fast. So the house owner tries to use the surveillance cameras to the group's advantage. The angry old man warns the house owner to be careful. The policewoman and Tom tie the house owner to a chair, just in case something bad might happen. Everyone leaves the room, leaving the house owner strapped to a chair. Later that day, the policewoman goes to the laundry room to do some kind of stretching, right when a man who prefers to be called machine gun, comes to the door, and tries to use his hormone machine gun on her. But she declines the offer for the moment. Then the director shows everyone else around the house, doing their own work. A few moments later, the old man and everyone else in the house hear a thudding sound from the house owner, and go to check it out. Right when they enter, the house owner pushes away the table and falls down, breaking his head in the process. Later that night, Mallory is seen sitting on her bed, when Ginger comes to sit beside her. Ginger asks Mallory if she is okay with her sleeping next to her, and Mallory agrees to it. Ginger starts asking Mallory questions about her life, and Mallory gets a bit annoyed by it. So Mallory leaves the room, and goes to the dining hall. There she hears a rumbling sound, and goes to check it out. Mallory follows the rumbling sound, and goes near a door. She opens it, and finds Machine Gun and the policewoman letting go of their hormones. Seeing them playing the hormone game Mallory apologizes and leaves the room. Tom also joins in with Mallory, and they both chuckle at the two young people. Then Mallory bids good night to Tom, and goes back to sleep. The scene shifts back to the river at the present day. And now it's been almost 14 hours in the rowboat. Mallory is seen rowing the boat down the river, when she suddenly hears a man calling out to them. Mallory gets protective, and makes the two kids get down, and covers them with a cloth. Then Mallory takes out a gun, and tries to point it towards the man's voice. Unfortunately, she couldn't do that, and some angry mustache guy grabs the gun from her hand. He then tries to remove Mallory's blindfold, and tells her that seeing the entity would show them the true world. Mallory struggles for quite some time, and manages to grab hold of a machete in the boat. She then uses it to cut the man, and make him go away. Mallory takes back the rowboat's oars, and begins to row away from the mad mustache. Now the scene is taken back to the past, and everyone is in the dining hall discussing the food shortage problem. Charlie speaks up, and suggests that they can make a supply run to the grocery store that he previously worked at. Tom gathers a small group of them, and even asks Charlie to join them. Initially Charlie doesn't agree with them, but after quite some persuasion from Mallory, he agrees to accompany them to the supermarket. They black out a car using some paint, and tape some old newspapers on the windows. Tom gets in the driver's seat, and Mallory rides shotgun with Charlie, the old man, and the policewoman in the back seat. Tom puts on the GPS and begins to drive. After ramming on the curb, driving over some dead bodies, and passing an entity, they finally reach the supermarket. They all go inside, and begin to restock their supplies. Sometime later, the group hear someone knocking the door from the loading bay, and just as Tom opens the door a little, Fatty begins to push the door, and the birds start to screech. Charlie sacrifices himself to save everyone, and pushes out the man. A few moments later, the group hears slashing sounds, and blood starts flowing from under the door. After losing another group member, everyone leaves the supermarket, and heads back home. Later that night, Machine Gun and the policewoman steal the car, and drive away. Now fast forward to 5 years later, the present day, and it's been 24 hours on the river. The rowboat hits an abandoned car, and the boy falls into the river. So Mallory stops ashore for supplies, and follows the sound of a chime, while leaving a fishing reel tied back to the boat. The sound leads Mallory to an old camp, and there she finds supplies. Then Mallory heads back to the boat in time, and saves the girl from going away too far. Back to the past, Tom reveals that he was a former soldier, and tells Mallory a small story of how he got the chain he's wearing. Then a few moments later, Tom and Mallory have an intimate moment with each other. The next day, Ginger lets in a man named Mad Max, without anyone's knowledge and against everyone else's wishes. 
Mad Max tells them about a group of psychos who had escaped from a mental institution, and that they are forcing other people to look at the creatures. Mad Max was one of the victims, and somehow managed to escape. Having heard enough of Mad Max's bullshit, the old man forces Mad Max to leave the house, but the silent old lady smashes a vase on his head, and knocks him out. The group then tie up the old man in the garage, and the two pregnant women in the house go into labor simultaneously. So the two women are taken upstairs to the bedroom, and the silent old lady works on delivering the two babies. Using this opportunity, Mad Max puts the birds in the freezer, and begins to remove all the covers from the window. Then Mad Max knocks out Tom, and opens the garage door, to expose the old man to the entities. Then Mad Max proceeds to go upstairs, and starts removing all the covers from the window. Ginger doesn't look away in time, and sees out the window. Mallory manages to take the baby away from Ginger's arms, before Ginger jumps out the window to her death. Then Mad Max makes the old woman look outside, and she kills herself with a pair of scissors, by stabbing herself in the neck. Then Mad Max kills the old man by pushing him off the stairs, and then stabbing him in the chest by using the scissors. Tom manages to wake up, and kill Mad Max. Now five years later, Tom and Mallory are living together along with the two children, somewhere in the forest. One day they receive a radio transmission from a survivor, talking about a small community located safely deep in the forest. Hearing this news, they decide to leave for that place. Right when they leave, a group of unblindfolded people ambush them, and Tom stays behind to distract them. Using this opportunity Mallory escapes with the kids by taking the boat. Tom removes his blindfold, and shoots all the attackers. But unfortunately, he kills himself after seeing the entity. Mallory and the two kids go down the river blindfolded on a boat, while taking the birds along with them to warn the presence of the entities. Right after Mallory, and the two kids reach the shore, the three of them get separated, and Mallory accidentally slides down a small slope. Then entities try to trick the children into removing their blindfolds using Mallory's voice. But fortunately, Mallory regains consciousness in time, and tells the children to use her voice to find her. Eventually, the trio reach the community, and they get to know that it is a former school for the blind. Later, Mallory releases the birds from their cages, and finally names the two children, the boy is Tom, and the girl is Ginger. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.